Hello. So today I wanted to do a little video about altars and just some different ideas on how you can set it up and um, some different ideas on what you can make an altar for. It doesn't have to be for a specific deity or uh, for a specific god, goddess, or spirit. You can make one in general towards an emotion. You can do a, a love altar or a gratitude altar or a prosperity altar. They're sort of like crystal grids in that way where you can direct them towards whatever energy you're wanting to bring into your home. I don't see a lot of videos uh, about altars where they talk about them sort of Really, um, many people, when they talk about altars, it's specifically for one uh, branch of spirituality or one religion, and uh, it doesn't really vibe with me, so I wanted to make one for people who maybe feel the way that I feel about altars. Many times if you see online, people post pictures of their altars or videos on how they made them, and it's very, very specific. It's They have a representation of each element, of each direction, pointing in the right direction with a symbol of uh, the Lord and the Lady, and it's um, color schemed, and it's they use salt to rim it, and I mean it's very involved. It's very, it's not, it's not very practical in the sense that you can just throw it up and go about your day. You have to dedicate a long time for it, and that's fine if that resonates with you. If it doesn't resonate with you, or if maybe you have lots of traffic in your home, lots of people coming and going all the time, and you have to constantly sage around your altar, and it just sort of feels like a chore, then maybe it's not you're not doing it the way that would be best for you. So I'm going to set up a little altar today, just so you guys can see it. I'm going to tilt the camera down, and it's going to be for... Uh, for harvest time, for abundance, and for gratitude for the goddess and for all that she's done for us during the year. As this time of year is known as sort of the witch's new year, I'm going to do uh, a gratitude altar. So I'm going to tilt the camera down so you all can see. And I have this cute little uh, harvest goddess figurine that I got from a craft fair. I'm going to use her to represent the goddess today. Sometimes I don't really have... Uh, a figurine to represent the goddess. Sometimes I use um, just crystals to represent a specific goddess. Like um, I did a class on Oya of Africa, and I, um, and my own altar, I just used my little labradorite skull here. So you know, whatever really works for you. So I have my little figurine I'm going to use, and I'm just going to use a white candle. Uh, I do use color magic in my candles: green for prosperity, red for love, um, orange for energy, but uh, this is going to be just an all-purpose candle, white, I'm going to use. I have a really beautiful crystal ball that I'm going to use because spherical crystals, um, the, the reason for using a spherical crystal is because it sends energy out in all directions. Instead of focusing it on going towards a specific place or focusing on bringing it in, this would just send out the grateful energy all around. And that's what I'm going for. I have a piece of fruit to symbolize the harvest, as well as a couple of seeds, pine cones, things like this, uh, to represent the harvest as well. And then I'm going to have a piece of desert rose to symbolize love and home and family and hearth. I have a, pe a little um, piece of a feather that I found at this time last year, and uh, feathers are sort of prevalent in my practice being that I use um, a sort of auger which is uh, where you take signs from the universe and you interpret them in your daily life so when I see a feather I usually interpret that as meaning that my um, my spirit guides or my guardian angels are nearby and they are wanting to send me a little message of, of beauty or of protection for the day. I have a symbol of one of my uh, my relatives, my grandfather there, that I'm going to symbolize family. And then I have um, sage and a little cinnamon stick. You can use incense or you can use an incense stick, loose incense. Uh, you can use Palo Santo or you can maybe put a few drops of uh, essential oil in your candle to get the smell. But uh, I'm using cinnamon. I had this cinnamon stick on a prosperity altar that I was using for a while because cinnamon is associated with bringing in money. But cinnamon is really brings in that idea of that sense of fall. And then I have a little singing bowl 
that I use. Uh, oftentimes I have it near one of my grids or my altars because just to cleanse the energy. Again, I use sage, but sometimes I use um, sound as well. I have a bell sometimes that I use too. And then I have a, a pretty little lighter that I keep close by to light all of my things when I, when I want to keep it going. Now as far as setup is concerned, there's really not one specific way to do it. Many people will do the candle in the center, some will do the crystal book crystals, you know, in the center, some will do the representation of their deity in the center, where, whether it's a goddess or a crucifix or, what, or a nativity scene or, or whatever. So you can do the goddess and a candle here, put the crystal here. I have a piece of fruit, I've got a couple of like seeds kind of at her feet like an offering. Got another crystal here, my feather, and then I have the things here. I can put my picture here, and it could just be a, a very centralized, maybe in the middle of a small table. Or I can do, um, if I have a longer table, and I want it to be a centerpiece down the center of the table, maybe I'll stagger. So I'll have a crystal ball, and maybe a little candle here. And then the pine cones staggered like this, you see? And some fruit staggered as well. You can have the crystal maybe maybe here. Have a goddess, feather, candle, like that. And then maybe a couple pictures. If I want to use the picture, or maybe you don't have a picture, you don't want to you don't want to use a picture, that's okay. And you don't have a feather, you don't have to use a feather either. So maybe like this down the center of your of your table, you know? So that it's aesthetically pleasing. It doesn't have to look a certain way. It's just whatever feels right for you. So you can do it like this if you just want it to look really pretty and decorative. Or maybe you want it to be very simple because you're not out of the closet yet. And you don't know how your family is going to react to lots of crystals and singing bowls and things like that. So maybe you don't want to have a little symbol of the goddess, but you can have a candle, right? It just looks like harvest time is here. You can put an orange here. That's pretty. But it's your altar. It's what you use for your altar. And um, maybe you don't have nuts and seeds. Oh, look, a little seed came out. Maybe you don't have nuts and seeds, but you have a little goddess symbol that you want to use. So you can just do a candle and your goddess symbol and um, your lighter and maybe some sage. It doesn't have to be a very elaborate altar. Many times when you see these beautiful elaborate altars, they're, the pictures are taken by people who have um, metaphysical shops. And so they have an abundance of things to use in their altar because they're advertising and so you don't have to feel like you have to make a really big altar if you want to make a really big altar and you want to make it you want to make it super elaborate with lots of uh, the crystals that you have around it maybe you want to use a tablecloth and, and lots of different pictures of your relatives surrounding it you can do whatever you like whatever really feels well for you and if you want to do an altar and have it be more um, specific, um, I'll show you what I mean, like representation. So you have a feather for air, you have a candle for fire, you have pine cones to symbolize earth, so you have earth, air, fire, and um, I don't know, I don't have a representation of water here, but you could have your representation of water here. See? You have all the four elements, and if you want to put them in the proper directions, you can do south for fire, west for water, you know? Do it the way, do it the way that, that resonates with you. You don't have to do it a specific way. If you feel that you're doing it wrong and you want some direction, you can always ask um, some of your friends or uh, a community online and see what they say and how they use their their items to make an altar or maybe you learned something from this video. I really hope you did because I wanted to show you the way that I use my my items for building an altar. 
So I uh, hope that helps you. If you have any further questions, you can always go to our Facebook group, Intuitive Home Solutions, and ask any questions you'd like. We have lots of people on there who would love to share their knowledge with you. Blessed be. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.